All right, so we are looking at the Dow here. And one of the themes for the morning, as I want to examine what the environment's going to be that I'm going to have to deal with, part of that is this Dow. In fact, a large part of it is this Dow. So when I'm looking at what we had on April 17th, last Tuesday, and the range that was set, notice that the resistance and the support that we have on this chart is based upon a single session. That 194 up day. Okay? That's a single session. Notice how it is so far identified and established and contained price action since that day. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and now Monday so far are contained within that range. So this is what I call the chop within the chop. This is a small chop within a larger chop. Okay, the larger chop being this area up in here, this area, again, the, the boundaries of the support and resistance that we're seeing as the Dow was really unable to take the steps from, one, breaking the uptrend, and then taking that transitional market and going into a downtrend. We have no trend in this in this Dow right now. None. Hence the chop. So as you move down lower, we can see very much the morning is going to start off with a risk off the table attitude. You know, part of what we have to remember is when we have risk off, what are the what are the markets going to do? With this larger theme. The risk is the big theme every morning, by the way, gang. That's that's part of what I do each morning when I look at the markets. I do a, I do a chat each morning, uh, and, and part of what we start with the group is really what I'm doing with you right now, which is stepping back and assessing what's the overall theme, and that's the risk theme of the morning. If you don't know that what the risk theme of the morning is, it appetite or aversion? If you don't know that, you're actually not going to necessarily understand, I think, to the best degree, how the pairs are going to move in relation not only to commodities and, and the indices, but also in terms of the relationship to each currency within the pair. So it's part of your job is to understand the big theme. And under that, part of the understanding has to be how do the individual currencies move depending upon the overall risk on or risk off attitude. So I'm going to talk about that today again. So I'm using the Dow to determine that it's risk off. I can further confirm that. I can further confirm that sentiment when I look at the US dollar. So let's head on over there. So when I look at the US dollar, I can see we're bouncing up inside this triangle range. So when I get that weak dollar, I'm getting a little bit of a bullish play on, I'm sorry, when I get the weak Dow, weak Dow, I'm getting a little bit of that bullish play on the dollar. So there's that push pull that we want to see. And I know if the dollar is strong, I could see weakness in crude, I could see weakness generally speaking in commodities. And you can see here on the daily CCI, continuous commodity index, the push lower. And by the way, commodities have been moving lower for some time. This this acceleration is nothing new. Commodities have been showing that we are risk averse for some time. Again, imagine what is going to affect commodities. If the commodity futures exchange is the grocery store of the world, that's why I've always looked at it. It's the grocery store of the world. If you need copper, you're gonna, you know, that's where you go. If you need corn, that's where you go. If you're feeding people or building anything you're going to need commodities. If you're feeding more people and building more things, that's growth, growth and expansion, right? When, it, when an economy is growing and expanding, the underlying assumption then is it's strong. Strong economies have healthy equities. Healthy equities are a reflection of what? A, a risk on or risk appetite psychology where people are willing to do what? They're willing to take on more risk with the expectation of more rewards. So you can see how all these effects are, are kind of like dominoes. Okay? But weaker commodities, like what we're seeing right now, I'm not building things, right? We're not feeding more people in terms of this reflection of growth and expansion. And that's what we have kind of flat 
to weak equities markets, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. Commodities are a terrific way, one way, just one way, though, to assess that. So when I don't, when I don't see strength in commodities, I have to question anybody who's saying they're seeing growth and expansion. Because growth and expansion, ideally, I'm talking ideally from a, har from, from a, from a perspective of harmony, the way the markets will move together if there's a strong opinion, we'll see commodities move up higher. So when I see that people are saying that the U.S. is coming out of the funk, that, say, China is coming out of their funk, or Europe, whatever it may be, I want to see that commodities are at least stabilizing and not pushing to lower lows, as they're doing, by the way, right now. So part of this conversation has got to be what are the supporting cast of characters that are going to be giving me insight into the risk environment? What are the supporting cast of characters? And I can see that the Dow, the dollar, commodities, I can go to crude oil, are a big part of that. They're a huge part of it, actually. Let's go to crude oil here. Moving down lower. Now, understanding how the Dow affects certain currencies. If you want, go ahead and grab a pen and paper right now, if, if you want. <laughs> if not, you can just listen. But if you want, grab pen and paper. Because part of what you want to be able to assess here is the relationship of how the Dow, you want to write down basically three major things, Dow, Dollar, and I'm writing this down right now as well so I can keep track of what I'm telling you guys. Dow, dollar, crude. If you want to put the CCI in there, that's fine. You can even put gold in there. Okay? Dow, dollar, crude, gold, CCI. You guys know that this is what I call my Forex market pulse. We've talked about this before. It's been a while, but this is the Forex market pulse, or what I endearingly have called for extra. It's the extra stuff that affects my Forex market, my Forex trading. And at the same time, gives me insight into what's happening in the futures market, what's happening to risk, and gives me alternative opportunities outside of the Forex market. So ask yourself, if the Dow is moving higher or lower, what is that, number one, expressing in the marketplace? A stronger Dow is expressing risk appetite or risk on. Risk appetite, risk on, greed, they're all synonymous. But what we're getting here today is risk off. Risk off, risk aversion, fear with a weak dollar. In a strong dollar environment, what's going to happen? We're going to get stronger commodities, right? Stronger crude oil. And again, this is ideally, you know, we're not always going to get all of these cylinders all firing together. But again, this is kind of an ideal situation. So you might ask how many of these things are actually doing what I'm going to describe now in this environment. So stronger commodities, stronger crude. Back when gold was a good barometer for risk, we would get weaker gold, weaker dollar, you know, weaker U.S. dollar, and yields would be down. Again, if the Dow is up, what are the things that are, again, synonymous with greedy, risk on, Risk appetite, stronger dollar, is not part of that equation, right? A weaker dollar is. Stronger crude is not part of that. I mean, stronger crude is part of that equation. So ask yourself, what direction should that cast of characters be going in? So again, Dow up, stronger commodities, stronger crude, weaker gold, weaker dollar, lower yields. But Dow down like we're getting right now. That is fear. Fear off, fear is risk off the table, fear is risk aversion. Weaker commodities, we just took a look at that. Weaker crude, we just took a look at that. Gold, again, right now gold is doing its own thing. I'm just giving you a, a typical historical viewpoint. I'm not going to look to gold necessarily to be a big participant in this, but again, gold in this fear environment, gold would be up. The dollar would be up. Yields would be up. Okay? Now, you know, we can dive down deeper again to say what does a strong or weak dollar do in terms of the movement with our pairs? You know, one of the easiest pairs to go to would be anything related to the yen, anything related to the 
uh, Japanese yen. So if I'm, for example, looking at the, in this case, let's just look at the Aussie yen, since it's a very popular pair when it comes to assessing risk. When I'm looking at the Aussie yen, part of what I am looking for in a greedy, risk-on, risk-appetite market, well, if commodities are up, that does help the Aussie a little bit, right? But the main story, though, would be what's happening with the yen. Well, when there's risk on the table, the yen is, you can even add this, the yen should be weak, sold or borrowed, right? When risk is on the table, the yen should be weak because it's being sold or borrowed. That's the carry trade. When fear is dominating the Dow, the yen should be strong. What am I seeing right now in this Aussie yen? I'm seeing a stronger yen, aren't I? Risk off the table. Stronger yen. Again, it's being bought. So the yen could also be a part of this discussion. How is it behaving against the Aussie? How is it behaving against the loonie, the euro, the greenback? That's just one aspect. This is just the Dow conversation. You can do the same thing with the dollar. You can do the same thing with crude, CCI, and gold. Let me mention, the dollar is a biggie because if you think about it, most of the pairs that are traded have a relationship back to the dollar. You know, the most heavily traded pairs, Euro, U.S. dollar, British pound, U.S. dollar, dollar, yen, even your calm dolls, Aussie, U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar, Swiss franc. You know, the most commonly traded pairs have a relationship back to the greenback. So it absolutely behooves me to make sure I understand what's affecting the greenback, what direction is it moving in, and therefore whether or not, say, for example, the euro could gain or lose ground against it. In the risk-averse environment that we're in right now, we can see the euro-US dollar is down. What are, what are the pieces? What are the cast of characters here with this weak euro-US dollar? Well, the dollar I know is up because that's typical of a fear environment. The euro benefits, the euro strengthens when there is what? When there's optimism, when there's greed, when there's risk on the table. The euro begins to move down on pessimism or fear. So not only do you have the weaker Dow, which is pressuring the euro, but the pessimism pressuring the euro, and we have the stronger dollar as a reaction to the risk off the table. So all these things kind of intertwine. You can't really point your finger and say, this is the cause day in and day out. You know, I want to caution everybody. Just take a pause for a minute here. I don't always want you thinking it's the same domino that starts all this. Even though I started with the Dow, the center of the, you know, when people talk about earthquakes, there's that center that's the, what do they call it, the epicenter of the, of the earthquake, where everything emanates from, it's not always the same thing. Don't always think the Dow is the center of the movement. Don't always think the dollar is the center of the movement. A lot of times you're going to have to go to the headlines to figure out what particular instrument seems to be moving the market. Sometimes it was the euro. Occasionally, especially last year, we knew the euro was dictating what the dollar and the Dow were going to do. It was the epicenter. It was the reason everything else did what it did. But it's not always the case. So don't always assume it's always one thing. Don't always assume one thing leads another. That's a, I think that's a terrible habit. Okay? Looking at the, the market, looking at headlines, understanding which economic reports have come out will give you a lot of insight into likely what the catalyst, the initial catalyst is. It's good to know what it is. It's even better to know the relationship. But it's good to know the catalyst because if that was the reason everything started, it will also often be the reason everything stops. All right? And I think right now, being in the heart of earnings season, a lot of it is the Dow right now. Okay? Even though it's in a chop, I think a lot of it is the Dow. Now, every now and then when some significant news comes out of Europe or China, right? China's a big part of the, the risk conversation right now. We can't, we can't omit that. So a lot of times we have that as a part of the conversation. 
then we know where the fear could be coming from. We know what, in, what the different instruments will do in a fearful environment, regardless of where the fear is coming from, whether it's a China slowdown, okay, whether it's a Euro optimism type situation. Now, what is that? What is that creating in our cast of characters, Dow, Dollar, Crude, CCI, Gold? We know right now, today, let's talk specifically about today for a moment. A lot of what I'm hearing out of that conversation is that Europe continues to be really uh, the, the anchor here. Europe continues to be the concern for Asia and other emerging markets. Not just, you know, remember, if Europe's a concern for Asia, it's going to be a concern for other emerging markets. Okay, so if the emerging market drain because of Europe's you know, continued struggles are going to be part of the conversation, then do I know things are emanating still from Europe? Absolutely. So I do need to keep an eye on those headlines. Okay, this isn't fundamental analysis, gang. This is psychology. It's very much a, a question of psychology. You know, in terms, again, so Europe is part of the drain. What else is an issue? Well, if I know Asian currencies are falling, you know, it's not a big stretch to say there's going to be continued worry about where China is in terms of growth. Everyone's talking about China contracting. So we just remember last night, we just had the HSBC flash manufacturing PMI for China. So on the heels of that economic report, we're seeing that Asian indexes, you know, started pushing down their to, to one week lows. Um, the survey of the companies in China showed that the PMI, we're talking about the purchasing managers index. We talked about now for I think was it the sixth month in a row I think it is that it shrank again so Chinese manufacturing shrank again I think it's got to be the fact that you know we're looking at China's manufacturing I mean what does China do they manufacture this isn't hardcore fundamental analysis gang this is about understanding the psychology of the market and I think a lot of this morning's risk off we talked we looked at how that's being a, how that's playing out in the Dow is based on China so what's the catalyst what's the epicenter today I think it's China. Every time you look at the markets move, ask yourself, okay, what was perhaps the reason for the rally? I think a lot of it was Tuesday's Dow rally. I mean, we are in earnings season after all. But I want you thinking about these connections. And, and obviously, you know, I can only, we, we've talked about this for about 20 minutes here. Um, I know there's only so much uh, we can, I can throw at you at once. But I want you to start thinking about these connections. The Dow is the big one right now in terms of being an earnings season. You know, we talked a little bit about the dollar. And then, you know, crude obviously is going to have that connection back to the loony. Even back to the Aussie a little bit. Gold is going to have that connection back to the Aussie. I won't say to risk anymore because it's a different world. The CCI is going to have that, that, that reflection back on growth and expansion, right? Which will have not only uh, confirmation of what's happening in the Dow, but will be affected by what's happening in the dollar. The commodities prices, of course, and the CCI will have that effect back on, of course, to calm dolls. Okay, so you can't take one out of context and you can't say one is always going to be the catalyst. You have to understand where the catalyst is coming from. I think China is a big part of it. That's going to put a big drain on commodities. If you take a look what's been happening to the CCI index for some time, the CCI has been moving down lower. The, the overall view of commodities has been moving down for some time. What's going to be very interesting here when I'm looking at closely is are we going to find some support here in the mid 500s as we have before back in December. That will be something to watch and it will be very interesting to see if we can start to look at commodities as being really too, too driven down lower. Are we hitting a point at, at which we could see a shift in opinion? Maybe, maybe, right? Big maybe. But we are hitting that area, so I think that's something to consider. All right, so that is kind of a Forex, a Forex Market Pulse discussion for today. Thank you so much for joining me.